All right, we are ready to start grouting. Our trim work is all set, so we're gonna get started. This is the grout we're using. It's Ardex, and then it's the FL, which is their flexible grout. Um, we actually heard about this from Justin at Gillian Phantom. They have a penny tile shower, and this is the grout they used, and so I asked them how it had held up over their travels. I think he said they traveled like 12,000 miles during their first year and it held up great, no cracks, nothing. It looks just like when they first put it in. So that was pretty good review for me. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. We filled up our water tank. So we've got lots of water for the cleaning process. Got all of our buckets and sponges and towels and the float. Um, so we're gonna get started. I did wanna mention the color we're using, it's called Fresh Lily um, from Ardex, that's their color, but it's like a, it's kind of like a light, a really light gray slash taupe kind of color. I didn't want a really dark grout that would be super high contrast because I felt like if we didn't set our tiles just perfectly, the super dark grout lines would just emphasize any sort of discrepancies in the distance between the tiles. Um, but I didn't want just white grout either because I just was afraid that was gonna be too hard to keep up with keeping that really clean. So we went with just kind of a light, gray, taupey gray color. So I think we're ready to start mixing this up. We're gonna start in just small batches because it only has about a 30 minute pot time, so. We've never done this before, so we're just gonna mix up a small amount, see how far it gets us, and we're gonna get started. So you we're doing four of these? Two of these. Two. Running, huh? It is very. taking a little break in the grouting for a minute to actually set the tile back here on the backsplash. We had gone ahead and put the muscle bound up here and we were getting ready to set the tile last week and then all of a sudden one was like, hey, wait a minute. I think I read somewhere that you have to grout pretty fast after you put the tile on that stuff. And so we looked it up and sh I'm glad he remembered that because sure enough, 
with the muscle bound, what it says is that you actually have to grout within 24 hours of setting your tile. And we knew we weren't gonna do that, so we waited. Um, but now we are in the process of grouting, so we're gonna go ahead and peel off this, you know, the front little paper, and that'll reveal the sticker part. And then we're gonna try setting the tile. Now, I'm a little bit nervous because there's, I don't think there's really wiggle room. Like with the thin set, you can kind of push it on and then, you know, adjust it just so. But I think with this stuff, you just kind of have to stick it and get it right. So I'm hoping I can get close enough on this to make it look good. So that's what we're gonna do now is get this set and then we will get back to grouting. Not yet, let's just get, let's try and get this set. float and push them in really good and then We are done grouting. Um, we got all the walls, we got the little front of the tub grouted, if you can see that, yep. And the backsplash back here behind the sink, we got grouted. And we have done many rounds of cleaning and cleaning and, you know, changing buckets. I think we went through about, I don't know, eight to ten buckets of water cleaning and cleaning and cleaning so now um we wait for it to like really set up and cure and then we will go back and kind of clean some more and buff it and get all that haze off to bring the shine back to it right now it's still i mean as much as we cleaned it definitely 
still has a bit of a uh, kind of a it's not even really gritty it just you know it just feels like it has a film on it so we got to go back and really like polish that and buff that up and then we can caulk all the seams we have um, caulk that matches our grout so we can do all the seams and then when that's done, we can get the lights installed, we can paint our trim, we can start installing our fixtures and start finishing this bathroom. All right, we finished up the tile today by cleaning all the haze off with like bucket loads of water and just, <laughs> you know, all hands on deck. Everybody was in here with microfiber towels and getting all of the last little kind of gritty bits off and filmy bits off. And it turned out really well. Um, I can't feel any film on here anymore. The shine came back and they look really good. Then we also, um, we had color matched caulk that was color matched to our grout. And so we caulked all of the seams everywhere and like around our fixtures and around our light cups. Um, and then we painted all of that tr flexible molding trim work we did. We got that all painted. And I think that's what we've done so far. So now we are gonna work on mounting all of the actual fixtures. And we're gonna start with our faucets that are gonna go right here. And we actually have a separate hot and cold faucet with little knobs. Um, instead of a mixing valve. And the reason why we chose to do it that way, just real simple, like all the hot water goes here, all the cold water goes here, was because of the water heater that we're using is the Gerard tankless water heater. And it needs a certain amount of pressure in order to kind of activate the hot water. And a mixing valve has, the way Juan was explaining it to me is that there's an anti-scald thingy, I don't know what it's called, an anti-scald feature to mixing valves that prevent, um, you know, like when someone turns on another faucet or flushes the toilet or something and then all of a sudden, you know, it could be like burning hot, it will prevent that from happening. Um, but most RV water pumps are low pressure enough that they they don't give enough pressure to kind of override that anti-scald feature on a mixing valve and i'm probably not explaining this correctly but um basically a lot of people have problems with mixing valves and these tankless these gerard tankless heaters because they can't get enough pressure to override that and so <laughs> All that to say, the way that water heater works is that there's a little like control panel where we can just set the temperature that we want and then just turn full hot. We don't want any cold water mixing in there. It'll just like if I set it to 102, then I can just turn on full hot and once that cold water that's in, it's in the line works its way out, then 102 degree water will come out. We don't need the mix in it. And now in our plumbing, we actually plumbed in a recirculating valve right here. Um, and we're actually, that's another part of this project is we're gonna have a little cover here that hinges up. So when we turn on the shower, we can turn, turn the valve and it will just recirculate the hot water to dump any cold water that's still left in that line back into our fresh water tank and then we just flip it back when the hot water is ready to go and then we can just turn our knob on full hot and we're good to go so all of that to say that's why we have two separate faucets no mixing valve it's to make it work easier with our water heater so we're gonna get started
get in the tub. Nope. <laughs> okay, that's a little cold guy. Alright, that's it. Alright, so the next thing we're going to install is this shower outlet. So we just bought this off Amazon. And what we had to do was replace the nipple that it originally came with because it was very short. And so we got this longer one. And um, one of the issues is this is NPT. This is a thread. This is a tapered thread. And so we had to get that in there and I had to seal it up with a bunch of tape. But um, this will go through here and then it will connect to this half inch hose fitting here, which has a rubber um, which has a rubber bushing inside, which will make the seal. Now the problem is we needed this to kind of be clamped on here. And so I made, I we bought a nipple that was just long enough so that the threads just reach the back of the plywood. So like I said before, the problem is this is a tapered thread and we couldn't find locally um, any stores that sold a tapered nut. So what we did is we actually downloaded one off of McMaster. So McMaster has their whole entire catalog in Fusion 360 and they allow you to download parts so that you can build things around it. Well, I ended up just printing the nut and I had to mess with it a little bit because like I said, these are tapered threads. So if you'll notice right now, it's really, it's very loose because of the taper. And then as we go up the splines, it becomes really tight and it's just the right fit. So that should be just enough to be able to allow this one to fully seat in the back and this will just hold on the, um, the shower outlet. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a bunch of silicone here so it doesn't leak inside there. So I'm going to give you plenty so that you can take it along the bottom. Okay. Is that enough? I don't know, maybe. Alright, so it's time to install the shower bar. So this is the shower bar we chose. It's a Moen, just kind of a standard shower bar. And since we knew that and we had this, uh, back in the waterproofing video, we were able to install some inserts into the plywood that would accept a stainless steel screw. And so, um, what if you reference back to that video, what we did was we put into the plywood, we put a little insert that was threaded and then we put in these brass bushings um, that would sort of just allow us to grout and to seal all around it. And so now we can take these off because these were just placeholders. These screws that we have in here were just kind of placeholder screws. They're actually not long enough. Um, and we can unscrew these and we see what's left is just a nice little place for us to put in the real screws. So the reason these are placeholder screws is because they're way too short. This is how long the screw actually needs to be because it needs to go through this entire base. So this is the right length. We measured that and so this should be the right one. So we're gonna go ahead and install these and hopefully it'll be nice and easy since we already pre-planned this. Literally as easy as I hoped it would be. So that's on there. Just 
space. Yeah, you just cover the ends. Fancy. <laughs> Well, that's as tight as I'm going to get it right now. And then, do I screw this onto here? 